tis the season for putting together some shelf stable holiday treats for your pantry or your loved one's pantries. Hey guys, it's Jarrah with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back everyone. The holidays are fast approaching and I'm finding it hard to think about anything but Christmas. Festive holiday recipes have been flying with all of my friends sharing delicious treats. So I decided to whip up a few holiday treats the way I like to do them in mason jars. Shelf stable, so they're great to give as gifts, add to gift baskets, or just stock your own pantry so you have a quick and easy treat to pull out and whip up whenever you need it. Everyone loves a gift in a jar, so let's get started. The first recipe I'm putting together is a beautiful and festive cranberry salsa. This is a recipe that I got from my friend Lisa. I just made a couple small changes to suit our taste because that's how I roll, but this is an appetizer that's equally delicious and attractive. And for the cranberry salsa, I'm gonna be using a wide mouth quart size jar. And of course I've got my funnel to help me get things into the jar without making a mess. The first ingredient that I'm gonna put in the jar is going to be some powdered sugar. And I'm putting this down at the bottom so that it'll form a layer at the bottom of the jar and it won't sift through the other ingredients because I have plenty of room in this jar and I think it will look nicer that way. When you add your powders at the top, you can end up fitting more in your jar, but if you add them at the bottom, they look a little nicer. So it just depends on what you're going for. This is my powdered sugar container that I really like because it has this sifting lid. I can remember when I was a kid, we would have waffles and my mom would put butter on them and then we'd shake powdered sugar over them and that was so good. So I'm using three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar and I'm just gonna kind of shake and tap this to make this a nice flat layer across the bottom. And then I do have a couple other seasoning ingredients that are gonna go right in with the powdered sugar. First, I'm gonna be using some lemonade powder. This is basically just lemon juice powder because this is an unsweetened lemonade. So you could use lemon juice powder and you could also use lime juice powder if you'd like. Whichever you have, whichever you prefer. So half a teaspoon of that and a half a teaspoon of salt. And the next thing I'm gonna put in is my cranberries. Look at how beautiful these cranberries are. I'm gonna be putting two cups total, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one cup in first and then I'm gonna add some additional ingredients to be a nice layer in the middle. And then I'm gonna put the second cup of cranberries on the top. So I've got one cup of cranberries. And next I'm gonna add my green and white ingredients. So we're gonna have a nice layer of green and white in between the two layers of red. So for the green and this cranberry salsa, first I've got some green chilies and I'm gonna be adding a third of a cup of the green chilies. And next I've got green onion and white onion. And I'm going to add the white onion first. I'm adding two tablespoons, which is the same as an eighth of a cup. So if you have an eighth of a cup measure, you can save yourself a step and measure once. So there is two tablespoons of white onion, chopped onion. And next I'm gonna add my green onion. So also two tablespoons of the green onion. A little more green, I'm gonna do some freeze dried cilantro. And on this one, I'm also doing two tablespoons or an eighth of a cup. And next I'm gonna add some freeze dried jalapeno. Now I'm using freeze dried in this rather than dehydrated. I have both, but where this doesn't cook, it's not a cooked dish. I wanna make sure that things are gonna soften and not be hard, so I didn't wanna use my dehydrated, so I'm using the freeze dried. Now this is gonna add a mild amount of spice, the amount that I'm putting in. I'm gonna be putting in a one tablespoon and that's just gonna make it a little bit mildly spicy. Mr. Wicked Prepared said it wasn't spicy at all. I did taste a little bit of spice. The green chilies that we put in earlier are mild green chilies, so that's not gonna make it spicy. I wanted that kind of sweet and spicy effect, kind of like pepper jelly, which is another one of our favorite appetizers to have at Christmas time. So if you don't like spice at all, if you're very sensitive, you might wanna leave this out. This is not gonna make it very, very spicy, and if you want it uh, spicier, you can add more than what I've added. Cause I'm gonna be putting in one tablespoon. Mm, that smells so good though. All right, so now I've got my red layer and then my green layer, and then I'm gonna put my next red layer, which is just gonna be the rest of the cranberries. So one more cup of cranberries. See how gorgeous these are. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a lid and a band to this. And you can see how beautiful with all the red, white, and green, this is perfect for Christmas. Now let's see how to prepare the cranberry salsa and how to serve it. I am gonna use um, my little mixer chopper thing to blend this up. I love this little thing. Um, 
It's one of my favorite powerless kitchen tools. This salsa does push this thing to the limits of its capacity, but I have done it and it works. My stepmother turned me on to this. She has one of these that she uses to blend up her store-bought salsa because she doesn't like any chunks in it. And it's a very handy little tool to have around in case um, you don't have power and you have to blend something up without electricity. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump our salsa mix into this mixer. Now, like I said, it's going to be pretty full. But of course, once we add the water, it's going to start going down. And this is going to take one and a third cups of water. And I am going to put the water into the mason jar. Don't forget that you can measure with your mason jar. It has cup markings. Um, it doesn't really have third of a cup marking. So I am going to measure the water and just pour it in here, but it'll just rinse out the last bits of stuff that we have in here. All right, so I've got one and a third cups of water. I'm just gonna add it to my jar and then add it. I'm gonna pour it right in the middle there because it just rinses the sugar that got in there. I'm gonna put it all around. This is one and a third cups. And you can really see those beautiful colors starting to come back to life already. We're gonna be letting this um, refresh and soak up this water for a couple of hours, but I do wanna get everything down a little bit so that it will be more in the water. So I am gonna give this a little bit of a processing right now, but then we're gonna do the rest of the processing after it's set. All right, so that's just started to chop it up and mix it. So now I can just get it all pushed down into the liquid. All right, so now this is all ready to go into the fridge for at least two hours to soak up all that water. And this does have its own lid that it comes with. And that's another reason that I wanted to use this because um, this is gonna be a lot easier to store in the fridge than my big food processor would be. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge and let it set for at least two hours in there. But while this is setting in the fridge, we are gonna go ahead and mix up some festive Christmas drink mixes. The next gift I'm gonna make is going to be an eggnog, but this is not gonna be a traditional cooked eggnog. This is a blended eggnog freeze and it is so delicious. For this one, I'm gonna be using just a pint jar. And this is, I'm using a regular mouth pint because these ingredients are all powders and they're not bulky. It's not gonna be difficult to get things out of the jar. So you could use either one, a wide mouth or a regular mouth pint. And of course I do have my canning funnel as well. So the first ingredient that I'm gonna put in here is going to be sugar. And I'm gonna use half a cup of sugar. Eggnog is a pretty sweet drink, but of course you can adjust the amount of sugar depending on if you want it sweeter or less sweet. This was just perfect for us. Next, of course, this is eggnog, so I am gonna be adding eggs. Now I mentioned that this recipe isn't cooked, but um, this egg powder that I'm gonna be using has been pasteurized, so it's okay. It's safe to eat without cooking. So it's great for things like adding protein to your smoothies or your shakes in the morning. It's great for baking with kids if you know they're gonna be eating the dough and you worry about that kind of thing. And it's going to work perfect in our eggnog freeze. I'm gonna be adding six tablespoons of the scrambled egg powder. Now a quarter cup is four tablespoons and then an eighth of a cup is two tablespoons. So I'm going to use a quarter cup and then an eighth of a cup and that's gonna give me my six tablespoons. And that is actually the equivalent of three eggs. Next, I'm gonna be adding some heavy cream powder and I'm adding a quarter cup of the heavy cream powder. I just ordered a big five pound bag of heavy cream powder because I've been using quite a bit of it in my meals in a jar and things like this. I wouldn't really call this a meal, but. And next I'm gonna be adding my instant milk powder. And the instant milk powder, I'm gonna use three quarters of a cup. So I'm starting with a half a cup and then I'm adding another quarter cup. And that gets our little jar pretty full. And now all I have to add is a little bit of flavorings. For flavoring, I'm gonna be adding vanilla powder. I'm adding a teaspoon of that. And then the other seasonings I'm gonna use are gonna be cinnamon and nutmeg. And I'm using a quarter teaspoon of each. And then with these little dispensers that I use, each click of this dial here gives a quarter teaspoon. So I don't have to break out my measuring spoons for every single thing, which I love. So just open up the bottom, give it one turn, and that's a quarter teaspoon. And the nutmeg. And that is it for this jar. And I gotta tell you, this smells so good with those spices and that vanilla powder, it smells amazing. 
I'm going to go ahead and get a lid on this and get this labeled. And this does have some kind of pretty layers. This one isn't as impressive looking um, from the outside, but it's going to be amazing once it's prepared. So to make the blended eggnog freeze, this is going to be super, super simple because all we need is one jar of the mix and then we're going to use one jar of water and one jar of ice and we're going to blend it for one minute and it's going to be so simple and it comes out so delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and dump my mix into the blender and then I'm going to go fill my jar right up to about here with cold water. Okay, so I've got one jar full of cold water going in. And then I'm just gonna go and fill this with ice and I'll be right back. And I've got one jar full of ice. Now I'm just gonna get this lid on and I'm going to blend it on high for one minute. Look at that, cold and creamy and delicious. Mmm, that is so good. It's cold and creamy and it's kind of like an eggnog slushy, which is really amazing. This next recipe is an eggnog and this is a traditional cooked eggnog. And this recipe fits perfectly into one of these jars. Now these are my pint and a half jars. Um, they're a little bit difficult to find. I will put um, links if I can find them down in the description box below, but you could always use a quart jar and just have a little bit of extra space if you don't have one of these jars. These are like my prized possessions. I have stacks of them downstairs. Once again, using the canning funnel. The first ingredient I'm using is sugar and I'm gonna be using three quarters of a cup. So there's a half a cup and another quarter cup. Now, of course you can adjust the amount of sugar to your liking. Some people like it sweeter, some people like it not as sweet, and you can also substitute out um, different types of sweetener. I've seen people do this with monk fruit. Um, if you are trying to avoid sugar, there's lots of different ways to do this. But three quarters of a cup of sugar is just the perfect sweetness for us. And next, I'm gonna be adding my scrambled egg powder, and I'm gonna be adding three quarters of a cup also of this. So there's a half a cup and another quarter cup. And next, I'm gonna be adding my instant milk powder, and this one is also going to be three quarters of a cup. So I've got a half and another quarter. I'm also going to be adding two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now this is an optional ingredient. This is going to help thicken it up a little bit and make it a little bit more like store-bought eggnog. The eggs do thicken it some as they cook because this is a cooked eggnog, but I like it a little bit thicker. So I add the cornstarch. Now this is optional. Like I said, if you don't want to add this, you don't have to. I'm sure the store-bought um, versions use much worse things than cornstarch to thicken the eggnog. So two tablespoons. And next I'm gonna be adding some heavy cream powder. I'm adding a half a cup of this. And that's gonna about fill this jar up. And I have just enough room to add my seasonings. So for seasonings, I'm gonna be adding some vanilla powder. I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of vanilla powder. I'm gonna be adding cinnamon and nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of each. And I'm gonna be adding some rum flavor powder. Now I'm gonna say this is an optional ingredient because this was really pretty difficult to find. Um, I couldn't find this or anything like this on Amazon. I had to go to this specialty website, but this was an amazing website. They have so many different flavorings and things available. So I will have a link to my source down in the description box. So you can go check it out if you want to order it, go ahead. It wasn't particularly expensive, but it wasn't Amazon. So I had to pay shipping, but I just wanted to give it a little bit more of that sort of rum store-bought eggnog flavor. And so I'm putting a quarter teaspoon of this rum flavor powder. But if you don't have this and you don't, um, want to purchase it special for this then you can leave it out okay so now this is all ready for the lid and here is our eggnog mix ready to go now i'm going to show you how we fix up this classic cooked eggnog for this i'm going to get out my induction burner so i can work right up here on the island so for this eggnog i'm just going to be using um, a nice heavy bottom pot and this is a pot that's compatible with this induction burner because this induction burner 
transfers the heat magnetically, so it has to be a pot that a magnet will stick to. So this one fits the bill. I've used this before. So I'm going to be emptying this mix into the pot, and then I'm going to be adding six cups of water. Now this is a pint and a half mason jar, so it does have, it holds three cups, and it does have a three cup marking. So I can use this to measure my water. Now before I add the water, I am going to whisk this together a little bit just to combine all these ingredients. It's going to help us be less likely to get clumps. Okay, and I am going to whisk it as I add my water. I've got my first three cups. Okay, now I'm going to go get my next three cups. All right, so this is going to make six cups of water once we get this in here. Okay, so now that this is pretty well blended, um, there might be some little clumps of like the heavy cream powder, but that's going to melt away as it heats. We really just want to make sure there's no clumps of the egg powder or the cornstarch because those will um, form a hard, you know, clump if they stay clumped and cook that way. So, but any of the heavy cream powder will just melt away as it cooks. So I'm not going to whisk it the whole time. I'm going to get a spoon and we're going to do the rest with a spoon. The one other tool I'm going to have handy for making this eggnog is my instant read thermometer. I'm going to be cooking this to about 160 degrees. Now 160 degrees is the temperature that you would need to reach to make your eggs safe if you were using raw eggs in your eggnog. We don't have to worry about reaching that temperature for our eggs because they're safe to eat even if they're uncooked. But that is also the temperature that it seems to start to thicken at. And so I'm going to be going to about 160 as well. I'm going to keep this on about medium heat and not put it too high because you don't want to scorch anything. Wow, this is just about to 160 and I have this all the way down to four, which is out of nine. So it's on a pretty low heat. This burner heats really quickly. I've done this on my electric stove top when I wasn't filming and it takes quite a bit longer. All right, so yes, this is over 160. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, but I'm gonna let it stay on the burner. Maintain this heat just a little bit because now that it's reached this temperature, all we're going to really let it do is um, cool off and then I'm going to refrigerate it until it's cold and then it will be ready to serve. Now it doesn't seem too thick right now and it's not going to probably ever be as thick as store-bought eggnog, which is okay with me. You could probably add a little bit more cornstarch if you wanted it to be thicker, but it will thicken up as it cools. So it will be thicker than what it is right now. And we think it's just about perfect for us. So I'm gonna move this off the burner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let this cool and then I'm gonna get it into a container. Um, I've been putting it in a half gallon mason jar so I don't wanna pour it in while it's super duper hot. So depending on what kind of container you're using. You can either let it cool or just pour it straight in and then get it chilling in your refrigerator until it's cold and ready to go. So now let's move on to our next couple of items while this is cooling and chilling. Next, we're gonna make a couple of holiday baked goods and I'm gonna start with some cranberry white chocolate cookies. And for this project, I'm gonna be using a wide mouth quart size mason jar. And this is going to be a just add water mix. It's not gonna be like the cookie mixes where you just put the dry ingredients in and the person who receives it or uses it needs to add their butter and their eggs and their vanilla and all of those things. We're gonna have everything included right in the jar and it's gonna be a just add water mix. All right, so first I'm gonna be adding my sugars and I'm gonna add brown sugar and white sugar and I'm gonna be adding 3 eighths of a cup of each. And 3 eighths of a cup is gonna be measured using a quarter of a cup and an eighth of a cup. Two eighths and one eighths, three eighths. If you don't have an eighth of a cup measure because not all sets come with one, um, you can use two tablespoons. An eighth of a cup is two tablespoons. So, so we've got our three eighths of a cup of white sugar. And we're gonna try to get all these layers to be as flat as we can so that they look nice layered up in the jar. And next I'm adding the brown sugar. I'm gonna do um, another three eighths of a cup of brown sugar. And this time I'm gonna use this little spoon to kind of spread this around so that I can have a nice layer of this brown sugar because this is a little bit um, more sticky and sticks together. Now, if you've seen me do my meals in a jar, when I do meals, if I have to use brown sugar, I use um, granulated brown sugar, which is like a dry brown sugar because I don't wanna be adding extra moisture into my jars. With the cookies, I had the same thought, but I have actually seen some 
uh, food storage websites make cookie mixes with regular brown sugar and say that they're shelf stable for years and years. Of course, I haven't tested that, but I also haven't tested cookies with the granulated brown sugar. So I figure these are pretty much going to be made for gifts and for you know, pretty much rotated into use. And so they're probably not going to sit on the shelf for too long, probably not much longer than a, a year or so. And so I'm going to be using this regular brown sugar, and then I'm going to do some testing with the granulated brown sugar and some cookie recipes and just see how that works out. And if I have to adjust the liquid amounts and things like that. But for today, we're using the regular brown sugar. And next I'm going to be adding my fats. I'm going to start with some butter powder and I'm going to be using a quarter cup of butter powder. And next I'm going to be using some shortening powder. Now I'm using butter powder and shortening powder because when I make my cookies um, normally, like not as a dry mix, I use butter and shortening. I use half of each. They each have different properties that they lend to the finished cookie. And so I like to use a blend of both. Now I know shortening isn't supposed to be the healthiest thing in the world, but honestly, these are cookies. This isn't health food. It's a sweet treat that we have in moderation every once in a while. It's full of sugar. It's full of fat. It's definitely not going to be healthy no matter what we do. So I am not going to worry about the shortening or the shortening powder. I'm also using a quarter cup of the shortening powder. And I will put all of my sources for all of my ingredients um, down in the description box, at least these harder to find items. And I will put, um, I'll, I'll list the brand that I used because sometimes you get differences between brands in things like flavor, things like texture. And so if you want to use the same brand as I do to make sure you get the same result, you'll know what I use because I'll have it down in the description. So we've got our sugars and our fats. And next I'm going to be adding my eggs. So I'm adding some scrambled egg powder and I'm adding two tablespoons of the scrambled eggs, which is the same as an eighth of a cup, if you remember from the sugars. So there's an eighth of a cup or two tablespoons of egg powder. And next I'm going to be adding my flour. I'm going to be adding one and one eighth cup of flour. I'm going to add that separately. I'm going to add a cup first and then I'm going to put a couple of other powdered ingredients and then add the final eighth of a cup just because I'd like to have those ingredients kind of combined into the flour. So I've got my first one cup of flour and next I'm going to be adding some baking soda, a half a teaspoon of baking soda and I am going to pass it through my mesh strainer just to make sure that there's no lumps in it. And next vanilla powder, a half a teaspoon also of vanilla powder and then salt a quarter teaspoon of salt. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my final one eighth of a cup of flour. Now I don't have my trusty old flour bin up here because I'm actually transitioning to a new system. I think um, maybe I will show you in this video if I have enough time. I kind of doubt it, but so I'll probably be showing you in one of my next hauls. So stay tuned for that. But here's my final eighth of a cup of flour. So that's our cookie base. And now we're just going to be adding our goodies. I'm going to start with some white chocolate morsels a half a cup of those. And finally, I'm going to add my cranberries. I'm going to add about three quarters of a cup of the cranberries and it's going to fill the jar pretty much all the way up. So there's a half a cup and another quarter cup of the cranberries. And that does it for our jar. I'm going to go ahead and get a lid on this. And we've got our beautiful white chocolate cranberry cookie mix. Just add water. So now to prepare the cranberry white chocolate cookies, I am going to use my trusty old KitchenAid. She has seen better days, but she's still kicking. I think I'm going to replace her soon. So I am just going to empty the mix right into the bowl of the KitchenAid. And now that that's in here, we're going to need about a half a cup of water. It's not very much water for this mix. Um, I'm going to add it slowly and once it starts to look like cookie dough consistency, it's going to be ready. Now keep in mind, depending on where you live, if you live in a more humid climate or in a more dry climate, you might need um, differing amounts of water. I, I just kind of discovered this. I have a friend who lives in a drier climate and she's had to adjust like her, her water amounts and her cooking times and things for some meals in a jar. So just keep that in mind. So I'm just going to start the water in and start the mixer really low so that it doesn't fly all over the place. And then we will see when we've got enough water. So that was half a cup. Does look like we're going to need maybe about another tablespoon more. Now you can see that looks like a good um, cookie dough consistency. 
I do see a couple little flower bits in there, so I'm just gonna let it mix just a tiny bit more, but not add any more water. All right, so now this is ready to scoop out into cookies. Now this makes a really lovely cookie dough and this is delicious. So if you want to do edible cookie dough, this is the way to go because remember the eggs that we used were pasteurized. So this is safe to eat as is. I know some people don't, and um, they say it's unsafe to eat raw flour. I'm not sure, I've never really understood why that would be, but I do believe you can bake your flour in the oven a little bit before you use it and then just let it cool to make it safe. So this would be a great edible cookie dough, but I am gonna put it on cookie sheets and bake it in the oven. I've got, I like these insulated cookie sheets. They make it so that your bottoms don't brown too much. And of course, I've got my trusty cookie scoop. These scoops are great for so many things. They're good for making meatballs. They're good for filling mini muffins. And of course, they're good for cookies. I do think this got a little bit wetter than the last times I've made this. So really, we probably could have done without that entire last tablespoon of water but I think they're still gonna bake up okay. All right, I think that's good for the first tray. So these are ready to go in the oven. I've got the oven set to 350 degrees and we're gonna go ahead and put them for about 10 minutes to start. And then if they look like they need a little bit longer, they should be browning around the edges. Um, and sort of set up in the center, just like any other cookie. So if, if they look like they need longer after 10 minutes, I'll give it another two minutes. So 10 to 12 minutes on these usually is good. All right, so here they are. These are done. I did let them go the extra two minutes um, and I think they look just about perfect now. So I'm gonna let these cool. And I do have some more cookie dough. I'm gonna go ahead and throw onto another sheet and bake those up and get these all baked off. I usually get, I think about a dozen and a half cookies out of one of these jars which is just about perfect. So I'll see you back here when these are cool and you can see what they look like. Now you don't wanna leave these on the tray too long. They could have a tendency to stick a little bit more than your typical cookie because the butter powder isn't quite as buttery and fatty as, um, as real butter. In fact, I left these a little bit too long because they're totally cool. But um, if you have one of these scrapers with the kind of wedgy edge, they're perfect for getting cookies off the tray. Mm, these are super good. Okay, so it's time to check on the cranberry salsa because this has been in the fridge. So it's definitely soaked up a lot of water and I'm just gonna get it mixed in and then I'm gonna get it chopped up the rest of the way. All right, so I'm gonna put the blending lid back on. Now can, you can leave this as chunky as you want or get it as smooth as you want. I want it with smaller pieces, not super chunky, but you definitely don't want it pureed. So I think this is looking pretty good. This is about to our liking. So I can just take out my blade. Now, if you are not quite ready to serve this, you can go ahead and stick the lid back on and get it back in the fridge can see how beautiful that is. But I am gonna go ahead and get this ready to serve. So what I'm gonna do is take um, a block of softened cream cheese and I'm gonna spread it onto my serving plate or serving dish. And then we're gonna put the salsa right over top of it and serve it with crackers. I really would like to microwave this to soften it, but since my plate has gold on it, that's probably not a good idea. It has been setting out, but it could be a little bit softer. Okay, now, now it's just ready for some crackers and a spreader. Now we like to do this with crackers, but it's also equally as good if you scoop it up with tortilla chips. So you just wanna have some of the cream cheese and some of the salsa all together. A little spicy, sweet, and creamy. Mmm, it is so good. And now it's time to serve up the eggnog that's been chilling until it's cold. Now I store it in these mason jars. You definitely wanna make sure to shake it up before you serve it because you're gonna have your spices settled down on the bottom. 
So give it a good shake. Now I'm not going to serve it out of this because I'm afraid I'll make a big mess. So I do have um, my glass pitcher that I have for special occasions. I'm just going to pour it into this. So that makes a good size pitcher of eggnog. It didn't fill that half gallon jar, but it came, it came close. I mean, it was way more than half full. So that's pretty awesome. And of course, if you want, you can add just a little sprinkle of nutmeg onto the top, extra nutmeg just for looks. You can do that in the individual glasses too. And then if you want, I mean, you can put whatever you want in your eggnog. I know some things that I like to have in my eggnog, but it's always nice to have some whipped cream. And I really love these sprinkles. This is my favorite kind of sprinkles. I like to have them for every holiday. So pretty and so festive and they're actually pretty yummy too. And then the final, final touch to make these really, really festive is a nice Christmas straw. I like to have these straws for every single holiday. The next baking mix that we're gonna make is gonna be a brownie mix, but to make it more Christmassy, it's gonna be a chocolate mint brownie mix. And this is also going to use a wide mouth quart mason jar. Now the first thing I'm gonna add is some sugar. It's gonna be a cup of sugar. These are sweet, these are rich. This is a dessert. So I'm gonna add a cup of sugar. And next I'm gonna add my shortening powder, adding a quarter cup of shortening powder. And next I'm gonna add my eggs, my scrambled egg powder. And I'm adding a quarter cup of scrambled egg powder. Next I'm gonna be adding my flour and I'm adding two thirds of a cup of flour. So there's one third and two thirds. And next I'm adding my cocoa powder. Now make sure you're using baking cocoa, which is unsweetened and not hot chocolate powder. It's gonna be a half a cup of the cocoa powder. Next, I'm gonna add vanilla powder, a teaspoon of vanilla powder, baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Once again, I'm just gonna pass it through my strainer. You can see those little clumps and that's why I do this. And then salt, a quarter teaspoon of salt. And next, we're gonna to top off the jar with some candies, some chips. Um, I've been using these peppermint hot cocoa morsels and more. I think I picked these up on clearance probably at the end of last year. And I don't believe they're available anymore. So if you don't have these, you could use something like this, mint chocolate chip. These are like the Andes. So you could use the Andes brand also. Now, if you don't like mint or the person you're gifting this to doesn't like mint, you can go ahead and use something different. You could use regular chocolate chips. You could use something like these espresso morsels if you have them, although I don't think these are available anymore either. I have kind of an obsession with different flavored chips, so I have a lot of them. But you could definitely go with plain chocolate chips. You could do try peanut butter chips. I'll bet that would be really good. I wouldn't recommend right now just skipping the chips altogether because it's, um, it's a good amount of chips in this recipe, and so it definitely adds some bulk to the recipe, and I'm not sure how much of you know, the chocolatiness and the gooeyness it actually adds to the brownies. So because I haven't tested it without them, I would not do it without them. I am going to be working on a recipe, though, that's going to be a bulk brownie mix without the chips. Um, kind of like I did the bulk gravy mixes where you can just scoop out what you need and make, you know, a small pan, a large pan, whatever you need. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you want to see that when I get that done. Now look at these, these really are the cutest. I wish they were still making them. I don't know why they stopped. These are super cute. So this is a cup of these candies or these morsels. I'm gonna add to the top of my jar. And it's all ready to go. Get a lid on it. And there is our fudgy mint chocolate brownie mix. Okay, to fix up the brownie mix, I'm also gonna be using my KitchenAid, super simple. I'm just gonna empty the mix right into the bowl. And for this mix, we just need six tablespoons of water. It's not a lot of water and it is going to be very thick, but that's how we want it. We want it to be thick and fudgy. Um, I've got my little cup here that measures four tablespoons. So I'm gonna dump in the four and then I'm just gonna go grab two more. Okay, so four plus two. Okay, that's looking pretty good, nice and fudgy. I do have an 8 inch square pan. This makes an 8 inch square pan. It's a small pan of brownies, but these are super, super rich. So you can cut them super small, so it still makes quite a bit of treat. 
I am going to spray this pan because I don't want these brownies to stick. And this is actually just a Dollar Tree pan. Remember, if you use a glass pan, you're going to want to turn your oven down by 25 degrees because um, I've got mine set at 350 and bake it a little bit longer. That's if you're using a glass pan. So I'm just going to get this batter spread into this pan. It's nice and thick. And this is why I like to make these things for you on camera because somebody might think this was too thick because this is a really thick batter. But this is how it's supposed to be. And it's going to turn into a nice thick fudgy brownie. Just going to try to get this spread out in the pan. That's pretty good because it is going to spread and melt as it bakes. Okay, so into the oven these are going at 350. And I'm going to put them in just for 15 minutes to start with and then I'm going to check on them. Okay, so I ended up letting them go for about 18 minutes. Um, you want them to be puffed up all over, but still a little bit moist in the center because you definitely don't want the edges to get overdone. I'm going to let these cool a little bit. They are really, really good when they're still a little bit warm, but if you try to cut into them too early, they're just going to turn into a sloppy mess. So I'm going to let them cool a little bit and then we'll take one out and see how it is. Okay, they're still somewhat warm, but I am getting impatient, so let's see if we can cut one out of here. The first one's always the hardest to get out without making a mess. And there we go, delicious fudgy peppermint brownies. These are perfect for Christmas. Okay guys, now you have five new ideas for mason jar treats that you can use to fill your own pantry or brighten someone else's. Let me know down in the comments. Are you or have you given any food gifts or gifts in jars this year? And if so, what are you giving? From our family to yours, we're sending all of our love and holiday blessings. We love and appreciate every one of you so much, not just today, but every day of the year. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, please check in by giving a thumbs up, share this video with someone who might enjoy these recipes, and leave me a Christmas tree emoji down in the comments. And check out this video next for some more mason jar recipes that would make great gifts. I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.